Homework 3.5, Rational Functions, Video 6. Uh, the 7 through 12 shouldn't be here. Homework is still due Wednesday, May 27, 2020 at 11.59 p.m. Now we're going to talk about locating horizontal asymptotes. But as the board is currently empty, this should be a sign that I'm about to drag us down to my laptop so we can look at Desmos. Now this is what I would normally do if, if we were in a lecture class. I would pull up Desmos projected on the screen for everybody to see, and then start fiddling around until you tell me what's going on and not vice versa. But because this video is essentially a monologue and not a dialogue, I really can't have you tell me. I could just pretend that you're answering my questions. So I've got a graph of a rational function here. It's x plus 2 over x plus 5, which, by the way, should have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5. And if I just type x equals negative 5, you can see that that does serve as a vertical asymptote. But we're talking about horizontal asymptotes. I was going to ask you where you think this one is, but since this is staring you in the face, you'd probably say, isn't it at y equals 1? And you would be correct, because if we move off to the right, you'll see that the graph is approaching that horizontal line. And the same thing if we move off to the left. One second to go back home and zoom out one. Nope, other way. But the question is, where in here can we discover the equation of the horizontal asymptote? In other words, where in here can we get the number one? Now you might be thinking there's two number ones up here. There, there's one here. And there's one here, so is it one of those? Well, the way to test a conjecture is to conjecture something like maybe it's the number on top or maybe it's the number on bottom that's making the horizontal asymptote. Change that number and see if it matches your prediction. For example, let's say that you claim that the horizontal asymptote is this number on the bottom where it says 1x. So let's change that to a 2. And what would you think the horizontal asymptote would be now? y equals 2. Well, let's turn it on and see. Oh, no, that's too high. It's lower. Let's drag it down until it's the correct horizontal asymptote. Let me zoom in the nope, other way. Okay, so we're going to drag this asymptote down until it looks right. So somewhere around here, right? Does that look good? We can check by going over and seeing if it looks like it's getting closer, but it's not. And remember, we can do that by zooming in. Stop that. We can do that by going way out here and zooming in. So let's zoom in and see if there's a gap between them. Looks like there is. Okay. So it's not actually crossing it. It's just getting closer to it. Okay, so where are we? Uh, we're at 0 0.5. Well, that's just a half. Wait, a half? Do you see where a half is in here? Right here? We may be onto something here. When it's 1x plus 2 over 2x plus 5, the horizontal asymptote seems to be y equals 1 half. And I'll tell you right now, it is. In fact, I'm going to type this as 1 half so that it looks like the same. Well, let me do a slider because I typed a fraction. Okay, so let's put this theory to the test. What if we were to change this one up here to a 3? Where would you expect the vertical the horizontal asymptote to be now? At 3 halves? Let's see if we're right. All right, we're on to something here. Yep, looks like the, it is the correct horizontal asymptote. So it seems like the horizontal asymptote has something to do with the leading coefficients. Because the 2 and the 5 didn't change, so but the horizontal, the horizontal asymptote did, based on the 3 and the 2. Well, let's try it one more time. And let's see if we can reverse engineer this. Let's make up a different vertical asymptote, like uh, let's say y equals 4. Oh, that's, hold on. y equals 4. There we go. Let's make a function that might have a horizontal asymptote of 4. It seems as long as this ratio is 4, we're okay. So let's say we put an 8 here and a 2 there. Isn't the ratio of 8 to 2 just 4? 
If our, if our conjecture is correct, when I turn on the graph, the current red dotted line should serve as a horizontal asymptote. Drum roll, please. It looks like it. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, so we've cracked it open, except not really. Uh, because there's more to the story than that. Uh, it does have to do with the ratio of leading coefficients, but watch this. Let's say that I leave the leading coefficients alone, but on this x on the bottom, I put a square on it. Now, the ratio of leading coefficients is still 8 over 2, which is 4. But watch what happens when I turn the graph on now. Whoa. What is that? And more importantly, where is its horizontal asymptote? It's, it's not way up there. It's, 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 it's zero, maybe? Let's Google jump. Screw, screw it over here. Let's put that in the center, which is about there. And let's go back in. Is there a gap between them? This is a lot easier when I'm using two hands. Yeah, there's a gap between them. So it's getting closer without touching it, so it's the asymptote. Okay, so we kind of broke our, our, our conjecture. The conjecture was when the when the leading co uh, the horizontal asymptote was the ratio of leading coefficients. But we just broke that. Now, of course, I also did something else. I put a power on the bottom. But what happens if I put a power on the top, like x squared? Well, that looks interesting, but the horizontal asymptote moved again. Wait, is it back up there at 4? It is. What's going on here? So how come this one, the horizontal asymptote, was the ratio of leading coefficients, but this one wasn't, but this one was? Now, let me zoom out on that one. It has to do with not just the leading coefficients, but the degrees. Notice that the degrees match, and the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients. But when the degrees don't match, it wasn't. In this case, it was down here at zero. But when I made the degrees match again, it went back to being four. Oops, wait a minute, I put the wrong degree. Whoa, what? That doesn't even have a horizontal asymptote. I meant to make the degrees match, but they don't match anymore. Hold on, go back and match. All right, so when the, when the degrees match, it looks like the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of leading coefficients. But when they don't match, we got two completely different results. When it was this, the horizontal asymptote was at zero. So let me drag it back down for a second. When, it was, when the degree on the top was one and the degree on the bottom was two. But when, when I accidentally, quote unquote, accidentally, made the degree on the top three, not only was zero not the horizontal asymptote, but this thing doesn't seem to be tapering off at the ends. It looks like it has regular end behavior, denominate, uh, left end falling, right end rising, because the degree was bigger on the top. So the story about horizontal asymptotes has to do with degrees and leading coefficients. I'm gonna say it here, but in the next video, I'll write it on the board, and then we'll do some examples. If the degree of the denominator and the degree of the numerator match, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of leading coefficients, so 8 over 2. But if the degree on the bottom is bigger, the horizontal asymptote will always be y equals 0. I'll say that again. If the degree on the bottom is bigger, like this 2 is bigger than 1, then the horizontal asymptote will always be y equals 0. But if the degree on the top is bigger, there will be no horizontal asymptote. So it's a three-case scenario, depending upon where the larger degree is. In the next video, I'll summarize it on the board and we'll work some quick examples, because it's really easy.